Hi, and welcome to the first of the All About History videos with your very own history teacher. These videos are mainly aimed at students who are studying the Edexcel GCSE History 9 to 1 course. However, if you're just interested in history or if you're studying a different syllabus, I hope you will find these equally interesting and useful. Okay, so we're going to start with looking at early Elizabethan England from 1558 to 1588. So, nothing like it, let's get cracking. Here's the woman herself, England's most famous queen, Elizabeth I. She is the daughter of Henry VIII and one of the most famous Tudors. The exam board are going to ask you, what was the situation on Elizabeth's accession? Well, this is a very wordy question, and I think we can word it in a few different ways. But the one I'm going to go with is, well, why did she have so many problems? Her main problems were the following four things. Her legitimacy, the religion in the England at the time, politics and the society in England, and finally, Britain's relations with foreign countries. Okay, so today's video is going to look at her legitimacy and I'm going to bring up some videos in the next few weeks to look at the other issues. But let's get started with her legitimacy. So, in order to understand this problem, we need to look at the family tree of the Tudors. Here it is. And right here at the bottom row, you can see Elizabeth, the second daughter of Henry VIII. She's got an older sister, Mary and a younger brother Edward and we'll be finding out a lot more about them in the coming videos. Um, she also has a very little known older brother whose name was Henry. So how did all these children end up and why is legitimacy a problem? Well Henry married Catherine of Aragorn in 1509. They had a daughter Mary and if you follow the line down you can see that Mary was born while Henry was married to Catherine of Aragon. So this makes her legitimate. However, you can see Elizabeth's older brother Henry, born as a, a consequence of an affair Henry had with a woman called Bessie Blount. Bessie Blount was one of Henry's courtiers, but it's important to note that they were not married when they had the affair. This makes Henry illegitimate because his parents weren't married when he was born. This is really, really important in Tudor times. Illegitimate children cannot inherit. They can't become king or queen. They can't get any property of their father. So Henry Fitzroy, although he is made a duke and he does have a lot of riches as a consequence of being Henry's son, he can't ever become king. So basically, if your parents are married, that means that you are legitimate. If your parents are not married, that means you are illegitimate. Well, in 1533, Henry divorces Catherine for lots and lots of different reasons, many of which you will know. But one of the main reasons he divorces her is because she doesn't give him a son. He falls in love with one of Catherine of Aragorn's ladies-in-waiting. She is clever. She is pretty. She's exotic. She comes from the French court. And her name, of course, is Anne Boleyn. And here she is. He marries her in 1533 and they have a daughter. Obviously, Elizabeth is born after her parents are married. So this means Elizabeth is legitimate. Or does it? Well, there are several groups of people who disagree. They believe that Henry VIII's marriage to Catherine of Aragorn was never legally divorced, that Henry did not have the right to make that decision, and therefore the marriage with Anne Boleyn is illegal and Elizabeth is illegitimate. However, luckily, Elizabeth does have some people on her side. Some people who agree that the king has the right to make decisions like that and that the king has authority in his own country. Mostly these people are Protestants. To complicate things even further, Henry becomes unhappy with Anne and in 1536 he wants to get rid of her. Elizabeth at this point is just two years old. 
He has Anne executed and declares his marriage to Anne null and void and that it never happened and therefore Elizabeth is illegitimate. So not only has she got a whole group of Catholics saying she's illegitimate, but now even her own father says she is illegitimate. So as you can imagine, when she comes to the throne, all of this becomes an issue and she has to deal with this in the best way she can. But amazingly, this is not the only problem with Elizabeth's legitimacy. In Tudor times, women are really seen as second-class citizens. They don't have any property rights of their own. They're not allowed to own things for themselves. And when a, a man has a daughter, he's really only bringing her up to get married to somebody who will bring advantage to his family. So Elizabeth, when she becomes queen in her own right, is really seen as a bit of a curiosity. The idea that a woman could run the country on her own is ridiculous. Elizabeth's older sister Mary had ruled uh, as queen. However, she had a husband and he was able to make some of the big political decisions. So they believe that only a man can make these important decisions. Elizabeth is encouraged to take a husband. For Elizabeth, this does have a couple of benefits. She could have a child and then she will guarantee the Tudor throne for the next generation. Her husband could act as a military leader, leading the country in battle. However, Elizabeth's not overly happy with the idea of marrying somebody. She will have to submit to her husband because he will outrank her. Not only that, but if she is going to get married, she needs to decide who she's going to marry. And she has many suitors, many people who want to marry the powerful Queen of England. For example, Philip of Spain, there he is, Duke of Alencion, if I'm saying that correctly, I'm sure you will correct me in the comments, if not, and Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester. Now, the first two bring a couple of advantages. They bring foreign alliances, they uh, will secure the throne and they will put all the critics to bay. Robert Dudley is a Protestant and he is popular, so there's some advantage to marrying him as well. However, if she marries someone from France, she will upset Spain and she doesn't want to be enemies with Spain. If she marries someone from Spain, she'll upset France and the same applies. If she marries Robert Dudley, everyone will be insulted because not only is he an Englishman, but he's quite low rank and it's not seen as a good thing for a queen to marry someone quite so low down. Worst of all, possibly, is that Philip II was actually married to Elizabeth's sister Mary, which is kind of disgusting if you think about it. So, do you remember earlier I said that she had the Protestants on her side? A little bit of a problem is that lots of Protestants lose faith in her when she refuses to marry. So, she ends up with lots and lots of people angry and frustrated at her. But, Elizabeth doesn't let it bother her. She knows that she can prove herself. She's clever. She speaks four different languages fluently. She's clever at maths and her Bible studies, she is an intelligent woman. She understands the politics of the Tudor court, more than most perhaps, because she spent some time locked in the Tower of London because her sister considered her to be dangerous. This means that Elizabeth is going to understand the intricacies of politics and the problems that she is going to face herself. Additionally, she is a thoughtful woman. She takes a long time to make important decisions. She listens to her advisors and makes sure that she makes the right decision. Ultimately, Elizabeth remains the Virgin Queen. She hangs on to her throne successfully and she becomes one of history's most loved queens. Well, that's it for today. Join me next time when I'll be looking at Elizabeth's problems that are caused by religion. I have been the History Teacher and you can follow me on Twitter at the History Teach. Email me with any questions you've got and please like and subscribe below. If you liked this video, please let me know in the comments and you can also make any suggestions for events in history you'd like me to cover. 
See you next time.